everybody. Uh, thanks for stopping in. Check out another Tuesday check-in video. A um, couple administrative things first. Uh, I put a dead cat on the mic, so hopefully the, the sound is a little better quality here. Um, I'm monitoring my levels as I talk, and they're not jumping around as much. So uh, Hopefully I fix that, whatever wind breeze was coming through my room. So A um, couple other things. Um, uh, as far as the making sure you guys use the ticket system uh, I have seen a jump in that so thank you guys for you know starting to take use of that and reporting bugs and all that stuff um, it really helps me keep track of like I said where I am in development what I have to do what's uh, yet to be done and what I have accomplished um, I wasn't able to release a new version of input mapper uh, 1.7 last week uh, because I'm exploring um, some of the drivers and uh, some of the new versions Benjamin has out and making sure you know they they are compatible and uh, that you know they work with Windows um, there's a couple reports people saying that the insider build doesn't work with one of the newer versions of the drivers so uh, I'm looking into that making sure it's you know uh, seeing if it is um, in fact an incompatibility or uh, a user error or something like that so other than that, as far as Input Mapper, um, I'm still moving the macros into the profile section. Uh, so not much visual work being done there because that's mostly code behind. Um, but I am working on a couple other things. Um, one of them uh, I'd like to show off here. Um, there's been a couple of uh, requests for people wanting to uh, expand the controller compatibility and add a couple more controllers to the program but uh, I'm either not able to get my hands on those controllers or they don't know how to uh, decode the HID packets so I've been working on a new uh, HID decode program uh, some of you that have been with me since uh, the development of the 2.0 framework will remember I wrote a small utility for that but I uh, wasn't very well written it was kind of just thrown together really just for me uh, so I didn't have to keep dumping the HID reports to the output window and have to scrub through all that so I've been working on something that's going to be a little bit more polished off that people can use um, they can go in there grab any device and view live reports for them and you see this is my DualShock 4 right here and you'll see it's already putting out a lot of stuff here that's jumping around and some of that is the frame counter such as this guy here which is always counting up and the other ones are stuff like the accelerometer and gyro which are very imprecise and even when sitting completely still will bounce around like crazy uh, so there's a little option here where we can actually untick these so we're not distracted by them. There we go. So now those are disabled. Uh, you see you still got one here flashing. That's actually one of the sticks because uh, these aren't very precise and they'll bounce around on their own even if you just let them sit but that's fine it's not as bad um, but anyways um, this helps me out because uh, then standard users uh, hopefully this interface is simple enough for them to understand uh, they can go in there and get me the pertinent information about their controllers um, and you know what they need to do is they need to sit there and play with all the controls um, like I'm moving my left stick left and right and while I see a little bit of fluctuation here on uh, byte number two it looks like it's actually byte number one that's reporting it byte number two is just going to be my y-axis because it's hard to keep it perfect along the x-axis but anyways you know they can take notes and send that stuff to me um, and then you know same thing for buttons you see that's all going into byte report five so they can you know record what the value is for each button you push for example you know I hitting a cross here I'm getting a value of 40 um, 
I'm actually not sure where that aid's coming from. Okay, the D-pad also goes in there, so that's where that eight's coming from. Eight means it's a neutral D-pad. So, um, but anyways, yeah, I mean, just if you're you're looking to expand the compatibility, you have access to a controller, and it's HID compliant. That's a big one. The the controller must be HID compliant. Um, otherwise, it needs its own driver, and that I'm not in a position to support or help people out with because. I really don't do much driver development, so, um, you know, uh, give this application a try, play around with the controller, make notes, let me know what channel is what, and then I'll see if I can add uh, support for these controllers you, could, I, you guys have been asking for. Um, so anyways, uh, that's about it. I'm going to polish that off, try to get that out uh, the next day or so. Um, I'm also going to keep working on the the HID Guardian drivers and the Fireshock drivers and make sure they're compatible. All the new versions are compatible with Windows and I'm going to repackage them into a new input mapper 1.7 alpha and try to get that out to people as well. So that'll do it guys. Everybody have a good one.